skill-based rewards, hidden details, and Gaijin might have just ruined one of the best maps in the game. I've been checking the data mines and reading the patch notes so you don't have to. In this video, we're chatting about all the small little things that you didn't even realize were part of the update. So I hope you enjoy the video and don't forget to subscribe. It's no longer possible to launch some of the rockets on the Yak-38 when the landing gear is deployed. Which means if you accidentally break your landing gear off, you'll be entirely incapable of launching ordnance. One of the best changes to the update is that night battles are now completely optional. So you won't be stuck in your stock tank being able to barely see anything anymore. Although Gaijin do want to encourage people playing night battles, so they're offering rewards like loading screens and profile icons, the usual sort of thing, if you do choose to participate in night battles. It seems that this feature hasn't actually made it to the live server just yet, but Gaijin have said that the update is still coming, and it will look something like this when it comes to the actual game. If you didn't know, they've added a bunch of AP, armor-piercing bombs, to the game. This isn't an entirely new mechanic. We've had armor-piercing bombs on, notably, the Japanese 800kg bomb for quite a while now. These bombs are basically just designed for naval players, so if you're a ground RB or an air RB player, the bomb isn't so useful to you because although it does pierce more armor, the explosive mass is massively reduced. It's definitely a very nice addition to see these weapons available much more widely in the game. And continuing the trend of last update where American planes got bigger pieces of ordnance, the F7F has received a bigger bomb. You can now equip a 2000 pounder. The Aardvark has a completely unique ejection mechanic where instead of ejecting the pilot and his chair, it ejects the entire cockpit. The aerialistic map City no longer has an air spawn at the beginning of the match. Which is quite disappointing to see, as I thought it was quite a nice feature to get matches going nice and quickly, and provided some nice contrast to the larger, more slower paced maps. Quite surprising to see, but the South Asia servers seem to no longer be selectable. The B-57, despite not really ever seeing radar missiles, has received an RWR set, possibly helpful for ground forces. You can now hide the icons at the bottom of your screen, which is quite nice considering some vehicles get quite cluttered. And if you've played the game for long enough, you'll have every one of these functions on a hotkey anyway. The MiG-15 has lost its ability to independently drop its 100kg bombs, which I know isn't really a big deal, but there'll be someone out there who's absolutely devastated right now. The New Flanders Ground Forces map is quite detailed, and here's a couple things I found quite interesting. At the Charlie Point, there's a horse racetrack, which confirms horses in the War Thunder universe. And interestingly, a lot of the buildings in this area are quite detailed inside. This tower here even features a complete staircase and an entire basement area. Inside the lighthouse, there's a weird half door texture. And a nice attention to detail is the correct spelling for the compass on the very top roof that matches the local area where the map is set. There's been a makeover to the voices of the Israeli and Finnish ground crews in your tanks. If you are interested in what was a little bit wonky about the Finnish voice lines, I've left a link to a fantastic video in the description that really goes into it in quite a lot of detail, including going over how the commander is constantly telling everyone to shut up, which I thought was quite funny. You now get bonus RP based on your performance in the battle. You can see the different values on the screen here, but this looks like a very positive change to promote staying in battles longer and trying to do your best. The access hatch to reach the landing gear on the F-111A also doubles as the air brake. So if you accidentally break off your landing gear in the aircraft, you won't be able to fully retract the air brake panel anymore. Bushes and general shrubbery is now a lot easier to machine gun, so you can actually see what you're shooting at. I feel like they're going to tone this back a bit because you can deforest an entire nature reserve in a matter of seconds. When you call in an artillery strike, there's now a unique and independent sound that goes along with the marker shells, which is like the orange stuff beforehand. The Japanese F-104 can now carry six missiles. The I-153 has lost the ability to carry four bombs and the Mi-24P now has a brand new gun pod. 